Hi, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Rumi Fauzi. And in this video, we are going to continue our 2D platformer with Playmaker. And in this episode, let's create a shooting mechanism. So first, I need to change the sprites because this one doesn't have a shooting animation. And I've already downloaded a new sprite assets. It's a robot sprite assets. And as you can see, it has a lot of animation here. It has a run shoot, shoot, and the jump shoot. And I've put the link in the description. So in order to change the sprite, let's select the child object, the pilot boy, and I've renamed this to robot. And let's just change the sprite slot under the sprite render. And I'm going to insert the idle. And now once we modify this, you'll see that our character is not aligned with the collider anymore. So in order to fix this, let's just select the robot game object. And you see that we have this playmaker icon, and this is basically a gizmo for an object that has an FSM attached to it. So we can use that as a guide. I'm going to move this above and then make sure that the feet aligns with the middle part of the icon. Okay, so now if we select the parent game object, you see that the capsule collider bottom part is aligned with our leg. And the next thing that we want to change is we want to change the controller to a new controller that I've been modified. So I'm going to show you here. If we go to the animation folder, I've created a robot folder. And here I have a new robot controller. So I'm going to drag this controller. And so now I've assigned the robot controller. You see that we have a couple of animation. I'm going to explain about the animator first. Here in the animator, I've add two new states, which is the run shoot and the idle shoot. And the run shoot should be transitioned from the run state. So I've created a state from the run to run shoot and also from the run shoot back to run. Here, if we select the transition, it has this condition and it gets triggered using a trigger called shoot. So in order to do this, just add a trigger parameters and I've renamed this to shoot and I've used that trigger to trigger the run shoot condition. And for the run shoot back to run, I've just used the has exit time without any conditions applied to it. And for the settings, I've set the transition duration to zero. So it will transition right away to the run from run shoot. And for the idle shoot, it's actually the same from the idle to the idle shoot state. We are using the shoot trigger parameter to trigger the condition. And going back from the idle shoot to the idle, I've just used also the has exit time. So that is the only animator modification that I've did. And each of the state I've replaced using a new clip. So in order to create a new clip, you can just go to the project panel here and right click. And then under create, you can create a animation. Once you create an animation, it will create a new clip here. Let's just call this new clip. And you need to assign all of this new clip here to the slot here. So for example, I can assign the new clip to the robot idle here. And if I select the robot now, then go to the animation window we can start modifying the clip that we've created. For example, the new clip, I can just start putting the sprite from the sprites folder here, just to create the idle animation. But I've already done that, so I'm going to revert the idle back to the robot idle clip. And here, if we select the robot, you see that we have the robot idle animation. I've set the samples to 24, and we also have the robot idle shoot. We also have the robot jump and for the robot jump, I've spaced the middle part of the animation for about almost one second. So the total duration of our jumping is one second. And then for the robot run, it looks like this. And for the robot run shoot, it looks like this. So now we have set up the animator, the animation. There are a couple animation that we need to make sure it's a loop animation. So if we go to the animation and robot folder, I've set the robot idle loop time options to check and also for the robot run and the rest animations are all disabled. Okay. So now let's go back to our scene here and we need to change the way we've handling sprite flipping. So if we select the player game object here, go to the playmaker tab. I'm going to switch to the direction FSM and here we have a set property. So I'm going to remove this 
and also for the face left state I'm going to also remove the set property and I'm going to add a set scale so we want to modify the scale and put this on top and I'm going to change the X value so for facing left I'm going to set the X value to negative one and I'm going to copy this action and here I'm going to paste it here on top so I'm going to select the get axis and then press ctrl V sorry I need to copy this again and then here I'm going to paste this using ctrl V and put it on top and in the face right state we want to change the X value to 1 so now we are relying on the transform scale to flip the character and you'll see in a second why we need to change this I'm going to create a new empty game object and let's just call this spawn position and I'm going to enable the icon so we can see it and I'm going to put this in front of the hand so in order to see this animation you can just go to the robot select the animation and then preview the run shoot or the idle shoot and make sure the lock options is enabled so if you select the other game object it will stays on this frame or in this uh, state of the animation and we can put the spawn position in front of the handgun here okay so I'm going to disable the preview now and now let's save the scene and if we press play and I'm going to enable the gizmo you see that if I select the spawn position we should be able to see it okay here under the gizmo game I'm going to increase the size there you go we can see the spawn position gizmo and if we move it, you see that the whole game object are flipping, including the child object. So now we can use this for spawning the bullet. Okay, the next thing that we need to create is we need to create the bullet prefabs. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the sprite folder. Under the robot folder, we have objects folder. And this is also provided from the free asset that I've downloaded. So let's just drag the bullet here. I'm going to put it on the scene and it's somehow behind our image so I'm going to change the sorting layer of this bullet game object to mid ground so we can see it and currently it's very big so I'm going to scale this around to 0 0.3 on the X and the Y and also on the Z axis okay so now we have this I'm going to create an empty game object as a child of this bullet and I'm going to unparent the game object and let's just call this bullet and let's just set the scale to 1 and then we want to drag this bullet game object as the child object of the bullet here and let's just call this visual and now we want to create an animation so in order to create an animation on this visual game object we can just go to the animation tab here and it currently is locked so I'm going to disable the lock and select the visual game object and it will tell you that to begin animating visual we can create an animator and animation clip by clicking this create button so let's just create the animation and let's go to the animations folder and under the bullet I'm going to create a new bullet I'm going to call this bullet loop and now if we go to the animation folder under the bullet you see that we have this bullet loop and we have this visual animator controller and this is the controller for the animator component that gets attached to the visual object so now if we drag the animation panel here I'm going to dock this to the side so we can see both the animation panel and the project panel and I'm going to go back to the objects folder under the robot sprite folder I'm going to drag all of the bullet 0 up to bullet 4 here and drag this to the animation area here so we have this nice looking animation and currently it's very fast the animation so we can lower the speed by lowering the samples so let's just do that I'm going to set this to 20 and if you don't see the samples just go to the cogwheel options button here and then press the show sample rate now we have the bullet animation we need to make sure that the animation is loop so I'm going to select the clip and then make sure the loop time is enabled okay I'm going to drag the animation back to this area here and now we have the bullet setup I'm going to add a circle collider 2d and then decrease the radius to around 0.2 should be okay and I'm going to enable the is trigger option 
and I'm going to add a rigid body 2D but I'm going to set the gravity scale to zero so it won't fall down and yeah that's pretty much about it for the bullet and the next thing that we want to set up is we want to create a new FSM to drive the movement of the bullet so by selecting the bullet game object go to the playmaker window and I'm going to create a new FSM here so for the bullet I'm going to call this FSM's bullet and for the state here let's just call this move bullet and for moving bullet we need two variable first we need a float variable called speed and the second one we need another float variable called direction and for the direction we want to set this default value to 1 and for the speed we can just set to any value uh, in this case I'm going to set this to 7 and basically direction will define the direction of the bullet movement depending which direction is the player facing okay so now under the state here we want to multiply the float so we can just use the float multiply action and then we want to multiply the speed float variable with the direction float variable but make sure every frame is unchecked we want this action to happen only once in the state and now let's add a set velocity 2d here below and I'm going to set the vector to use variable and for the x value I'm going to use the speed variable that we've multiplied with the direction here before and make sure every frame is checked for the set velocity and we want to add a weight action to destroy this bullet so let's just create a new event and I'm going to call this destroy and here after a certain of time I'm going to trigger the event destroy so let's just add a transition destroy and I'm going to add a new state to destroy the bullet here in the new state you can just call this destroy bullet and add a destroy self action okay so let's just define the time I'm going to set this to two seconds for the wait action and connect the destroy to the destroy bullet state here okay so now we've set up the bullet prefabs here I'm going to rename this to bullet foot because I've already created another prefabs here and I'm going to drag the bullet game object to the prefabs folder okay now we can safely delete this and the next thing that we want to create is we need to create the FSM to fire the bullet so let's just select the player here and under the playmaker tab let's create a new FSM and this time we can call this FSM shooting and for the first state it's going to be wait for input and here for the wait for input we want to use the get button down action and we can just use fire one button and for the event we need to create a new event I'm going to create a fire event and I'm going to send that event here and add the fire event to this state here and I'm going to add a new state and let's just call this spawn bullet so let's connect the fire event here to the spawn bullet and for the spawn bullet we want to add a finish transition or event and then connect finish back to the first state here and first we want to add a wait action and this is for the cooldown so the player cannot spam the bullet every frame and for the finish event we want to trigger the finish event here for the time we can set this to a low value I've set this to 0.2 and now we want to set an FSM float value and before we can modify the FSM float value we need to create a new game object variable and let's just call this bullet prefabs and for the bullet prefabs we can just select here for the value and go to the asset tab here and select the bullet tutorial prefabs okay under the stat here I'm going to specify game object for the target FSM and I'm going to use the variable and we know the FSM's name is bullet so I'm going to use that for the variable name I'm going to modify the direction and this direction we need to grab the current direction that the player is facing so let's just use the get scale action and I'm going to put this on top before the set FSM float and I want to grab the X scale to a new variable so I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call this also direction 
it will create a new float variable and now we can just pass this direction to the set value of the set FSM float. This way, this will grab the X scale of our player, whether it's one or negative one, and then it will set the direction of our bullet prefabs before this bullet gets instantiated. And the next action that we want to add is the create object action. So here, let's just put the create object above the weight state, but below the set FSM float. And for the game object, we can just select the bullet prefabs. And for the spawn point, we can just drag the spawn point that we've created here. Okay, let's save this and let's give it a try. Now, as you can see here, if I try to press the fire one button, which is control, you see it shoots the bullet. And after a while, the bullet gets destroyed, as you can see here in the hierarchy, after two seconds. But if two seconds too long, we can modify the prefabs. I'm going to disable the gizmo so that you can see it better. And as you can see here, the bullet is facing the correct way, but if we flip to the left side here, the bullet is facing the wrong way. So we need to fix that. In order to fix the bullet direction, we need to go to the prefabs here, and I'm going to select the bullet tutorial. And here on the start state, we want to add a set scale. So let's just add a set scale action. And I'm going to put this below the float multiply action before the set velocity and we have this direction value received from the player whenever the bullet gets instantiated so we can just use this value to define the scale so let's just assign the direction float variable to the x component of the set scale action and let's save this another thing that we want to trigger is we want to trigger the animation so in order to do that let's select the player under the shooting FSM, whenever we spawn the bullet, we want to also trigger an animation. So let's just use the set trigger animator action. And I'm going to put this on top here. And I'm going to specify game object. Then I'm going to drag the robot game object here. And then we want to trigger the parameter name here. So I'm going to type shoot. And if we go to the animator here, you see that we have this shoot parameter. So we want to trigger this one. Okay, now we have set up the animator trigger. Let's save the scene here and test this out. And now if we shoot, it plays the shoot animation. And you can see that the direction of the bullet is also correct. And if we move and then try to shoot, you see that it plays the run shoot animation. You can also add an animation while jumping. Just modify the animator, but I will leave that up to you how to do that as an exercise. So yeah, that is basically how to create a shooting mechanism with Playmaker. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. See you in the next tutorial.